It was not at all clear to me when I started this book that I would find a way back into their lives again after so long. But strangely, you know, it was a lot like what happens in real life with good friends. You don't see each other for 30 years or something like that and, and your paths cross again. You ended the conversation yesterday and then and you take it up again today, but between yesterday and today there's 30 years. Uh, but but that's the way fictional characters are too. They're like people in real life. You discover that there's there's more of the conversation than you imagined. All you have to do is turn up. Sully entering that, rounding that final curve uh, in his life, having found a family in the early book and now threatened with losing that same family uh, in the new book, and having Officer Raymer on this lunatic, quixotic quest. And once I kind of married those two things, it just felt like fun. I thought, wouldn't it be fun to figure out what Rub is up to and what Carl Roebuck is up to? It was just wonderful to, to sneak back into town. North Bath, just kind of sneaking back into town and, and eavesdropping on these characters again. Having a movie made, especially a really good movie, like Robert Benton's movie of, of Nobody's Fool, does have a profound effect upon the writer. In writing the sequel, I was remembering my own character on the one hand. <laughs> on the other hand, remembering Paul Newman, with whom I did three movies. Paul Newman did not fit the physical description. It was astonishing for me to learn just how good looking Sully was. I, I had no clue. I'm channeling my own memories of, of, of the character, but also channeling all those things that he gave to Sully that weren't on the page. So now he's in my head too. Now the character is only half mine and maybe not even quite half. <laughs>